Okay, a very warm welcome to our first actual session of this year's SWIP. It's called Library Link Data 1, so we will have Library Link Data 2 on the next day. And it's no surprise that Link Data is a hot topic on, on SWIP. Uh, but um, Mark is still alive. Uh, during our first SWIP conferences, there was the idea that we will soon replace Mark with RDF. It's not the case, but uh, luckily today we have uh, practical use cases and we are beyond the phase of experiments with um, transforming from RDF to Mark. And so I'm looking forward to some examples of using Mark together with RDF data. And yeah, we will just start with the first talk, Mapping Transforming Mark 21 Bibliographic Data. Um, it's from uh, three colleagues from the University of Washington Library. Uh, they uh, both, uh, they, they three um, are in this um, project they will present. So I'm happy um, to announce Crystal uh, Yuragi, Ciro Geontakos, and um, Jupan. And um, yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to start and I'm going to talk about our project mapping and transforming Mark 21 bibliographic metadata to the linked data format uh, uh, guided by uh, resource description and access um, as aligned with the IFLA library reference model and expressed using resource description framework. Uh, so, um, in our abstract, we said that the presenters will describe uh, the theoretical foundation of the project. And uh, that got me to thinking about foundations and the continuum of theory and practice. And, and I would say that our original motivation wasn't that theoretical. Uh, theory came more into play when we continued and expanded the project. And also now that the project is international and collaborative, uh, the foundations are, are not common to all of our participants. Um, so the, the foundations of this project were at the University of Washington. And I would date that back to 2014 uh, when RDA and BibFrame ontologies were being developed. And uh, one of the main questions we asked, well, is BibFrame really ready to handle RDA data? And, and we thought, no, no, it's not. And uh, so we wanted to um, somehow um, make this clear by uh, doing a proof of concept mapping in 2016 from RDA to BibFrame. And this is, was not an ontology to ontology alignment. Um, we wanted to demonstrate how well BibFrame accommodated uh, an application profile of RDA called the PCC RDA Bibco standard record. And we decided it didn't do a very good job. Um, one of the main problems was uh, entity to entity relationships. Were, were, there were too many, many to one relationships. Uh, that would be many RDA properties mapping to the same BibFrame property over and over again. And there was an entity mismatch due to the lack of an expression property in BibFrame, which continues to wreak havoc today. And uh, we did it in actual ontology to ontology alignment in 2020, and we reaffirmed this, I believe. Uh, we had also motivational assumptions, for example, that the RDA ontology does accommodate the PCC RDA Bibco standard record, and that RDA data will be most accurate and complete as RDF using the RDA ontology. Uh, we also had a vision of institutions implementing RDA uh, can exchange RDA data with each other, and that once we have that data, accurate and complete RDA is, is well suited uh, to produce uh, other exchange formats like BibFrame. Uh, the years passed and we remain motivated by our assumptions. Uh, we launched multiple projects that continue to explore RDA, and in the meantime, BibFrame has become much more widely adopted than RDA. Uh, we don't, I don't think this is destiny, it's more like an historical accident, and um, uh, now we start going to theory and, and how we theory gets introduced into our work is um, uh, we want uh, to increase RDA LRM RDF adoption. And one of our main goals is to create an RDA graph uh, to better understand the drawbacks and benefits of RDA as linked data, how it compares to other models and uh, put into play the RDA registry as, as we adopt the new RDA toolkit in 2023, or at least get it into our consciousness because I think it helps to clarify. Uh, if there were theoretical justifications that I don't have time to get into here today, they would revolve around interoperability and uh, human intellectual engagement with a mapping, uh, that shared RDA graph, building a shared RDA graph, assembling mapped ontologies um, so that we have a, a collection of ontolo mapped ontologies and um, developing a fluency uh, across data models with metadata professionals. Uh, we're, we're, more, we're open to more participation. We meet every Wednesday. Uh, the discussions are in depth. We go um, mark subfield by subfield. 
Tests are adopted by volunteers from a task board, task boards, time permits, and, and the work is interesting, it's engaging, sometimes it's mind boggling, and, and we think it's pretty well documented, so you can take a look. Uh, and I'd like to, I think we should go into more detail, and uh, Crystal Yaragi is here, our excellent project manager, and she, she, uh, if she can be presenter, she can do just that. Thanks, Theo. Um, hi, I'm Crystal Yaragi, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the format and the structure of our mapping work. So in the initial planning of our project, we had a vision in mind for an ideal mapping format. Um, we wanted it to be both machine readable and user friendly for Mark 21 and RDA experts who may or may not also be semantic web experts. Ideally, we wanted to be able to use a script to convert the mapping directly into a transformation tool as we had done for previous mapping projects. But unfortunately, this ideal format eluded us. Um, we couldn't find an existing appropriate and well documented format that we could reuse. And we also lacked the budget and time it would take to develop a format of our own. We needed to prioritize Mark 21 and RDA expertise and over advanced technical skills in our search for volunteers. The mapping spreadsheets themselves are necessarily really complex. Um, Mark 21 bibliographic and LRM RDA RDF are both complex standards and expressing a mapping between them with enough precision to facilitate machine transformation takes a lot of data points. Once we settled on a spreadsheet format, we used Python to create the initial version. This version included the entire Mark 21 bibliographic format plus the RDA registry's RDA to Mark mapping, but in reverse order. Um, so from Mark to RDA. Uh, we created some human readable norms for expressing mark tags and mapping conditions, and we established granular categories for notes. But again, the format falls short of machine readability. To make the sprawling spreadsheets more navigable for humans, we split them up based on mark tags and set up working copies in Google Sheets. We chose to work in Google Sheets for broad interoperability and real-time collaboration without requiring volunteers to master pushing and pulling from a Git repository. Um, we used a script to periodically convert and push the Google Sheets information to the public GitHub repository as CSV files. And in addition to an updated CSV version of the mapping, our GitHub repository includes exhaustive instructions for working with the spreadsheets and records of our surrounding decisions and discussions. Um, please follow the links at the bottom of this slide to check out our documentation if you're interested. Uh, your feedback and your contributions are also very welcome. I'm going to now describe the structure of the spreadsheets themselves. Each row of the spreadsheet corresponds to a single mark tag as it maps to an RDA element under a specific circumstance. We started with approximately 70,000 rows, each of which needed to be revisited and thoughtfully revised by a human being, and many of which needed to be discussed at length during our weekly working meetings. Finally, our spreadsheets include a minimum of 26 columns. Some mappings require further columns to accommodate more than two layers of conditions in a single row. It would take more time than we have to describe each column in detail, so I'm not going to do that today. But you are welcome to visit our GitHub repository for more details on our mapping format and structure. Now I'll turn it over to Joao Pen, who will talk about the transformation tool. Thank you, Crystal. Um, I'm Joao Pen. I'm going to talk about the conversion tool we're developing to transform MARC data to RDA data. The conversion tool is based on the content and mapping spreadsheets, and we try to reflect the mapper's intent as close as possible when authoring the transform. We also aim to create well-formed and error-free RDA data, which at this stage means we are trying to fulfill at least the minimum description of entities required by RDA. For the transformation code itself, we favor readability and clarity of the code for users of the tool who may not be professional developers, even if this means that there may be duplication in our code. We are writing the conversion tool in XSLT with mark XML as input and RDF XML as output. 
At this point, most of the code is in XLT 2.0, and we plan to fully incorporate the 3.0 features in the future. For the workflow, we'll adopt a field-by-field -field approach in coding the transform. The coders uh, first will check for mark fields that have been reviewed by at least one mapper and use GitHub issue labels uh, to indicate the coding status. Authoring the transform is an iterative process as the mapping status may change down the road uh, and the coders will monitor the changes and make uh, update the code accordingly. The transform files are organized into a simple hierarchical structure. The central file is the MD2R file, which, inc which includes uh, access files for each block of tags in the MARC format, and each uh, access files uh, include the access named file. Uh, the M2R file is where uh, uh, we use uh, a, apply templates to match each record and mint uh, work expression and manifestation entities described in the record and create relationships between them. Uh, we're minting only one work and one expression for each record because we are limiting ourselves to non-aggregates only at this point. Um, aggregates where multiple expressions are embodied in the manifestation uh, bring a lot of complications to the mapping and the transform and we're holding them off for, uh, for now. The access files um, hold the templates for each mark record, uh, each mark field, uh, and call the named templates in the corresponding access named files to handle conditions, subfields, um, and subfield con combinations. Um, now we'll look at a demo of the RDA output. We're testing our data on the, uh, on the data, uh, are testing our code on the data set of 54 mark records pulled from the University of Washington Library's catalog. And up until this point, we coded 13 fields, uh, which is a small portion of all mark fields out there. But we were able to produce uh, almost 2,000 lines of RDA data with uh, 162 RDA entities and over 1,000 RDA properties. Here's a link to the code at the, uh, at the bottom. Now, um, uh, we'll look at the RDA uh, an RDA description set in more detail. Um, here I'm using the more readable turtle format for demonstration purposes. And I've also uh, included in comments the labels of these uh, RDA properties for easy reference. Most of the data we've coded uh, for, uh, for now is at the manifestation level, but we also made sure that the work and expressions also satisfy the minimum description requirements uh, in RDA. Since we haven't mapped any titles to works and expressions, uh, uh, they both have stringified IRs as identifiers. We have implemented data type and object properties wherever possible to distinguish between streams and entities as values for faster machine processing uh, instead of the canonical properties displayed in the RDA toolkit. The data type properties identified by letter D at the end of a, uh, at the end of a prefix um, and is used when the, art, uh, when the range of an RDA property is a stream. Uh, the object of property is identified by the letter O and is used when the range is an RDA, RDA entity so that an application will know the class, of entity, uh, the class of entity it is by looking at the range of the property. Um, for item data, uh, the item IR, IRIs are minted separately from the WAM entities on a, a field by field or subject field by subfield basis. Here we're looking at a mark tag uh, 561, ownership and custodial history, which maps to a, an item level property, has cost, custodial history of item. When the first indicator of the field is zero, it means that this metadata, metadata statement about the item uh, is a private one, and we need another statement about this metadata statement to say just that. This is where the metadata work and reification come in. The item statement uh, is, a, is a metadata work, which becomes the subject of another statement that says the, uh, that says the category of the metadata data work is private. Um, to realize this in RDF, we're using the verbose RDF reification vocabulary, the RDF statement, RDF subject, object, and predicate, uh, adding four triples to express a reified triple. Um, this is our first attempt at implementing the RDA metadata work and may be sub subject to change.
Now I'm going to talk about vision for the conversion tool. RDA introduced some new uh, data models like aggregates and collections that may not be appropriately handled in our cu current code, code design. We are, and we are working on implementing them in the future. We've also discussed extensible issues that lack clear guidance from RDA, like the metadata work we just saw on the last slide. Some of these problems came up when we were trying to map specific mark subfields, such, such as whether to mint nomens, and nomen entities for non Latin script data indicated by the dollar six subfield, or how to treat concept IRIs and term authority IRIs found in the dollar zero and dollar one subfields, uh, both of which are not RDA entities. For the transformation code itself, uh, we plan to fully upgrade to the XSLT 3.0 version, especially re with regard to document streaming capabilities that come with 3.0. Uh, which hold great promises for testing on large-scale MARC data sets. Now I will turn it back to Crystal. Current milestones we're working on are the mapping of the MARC 21 fields included in the PCC BIBCO standard record or BSR, uh, the review of those mappings and writing transformation code based on those mappings. The review and transformation milestones will run through the entire project happening as mappings are created. Uh, once we complete the BSR, we are going to move on to the PCC's CONSER standard record for serials, or the CSR, followed by the remaining fields in the Mark 21 bibliographic standard, excluding obsolete fields except by request. After that, we will move on to publication. Publication is going to involve presentations like this one to make potential implementers aware of the work and requests for institutional support and endorsements from a couple of organizations. Our goal is to get the mapping approved by the Network Development and MARC Standards Office and the RDA Steering Committee. We are committed to keeping the mapping and the transformation tool openly available on GitHub so that library metadata creators and vendors are able to adopt them on a broad scale without cost. We're open to suggestions for making this plan more robust. So if you see something we've missed or you want to collaborate with us, please let us know. I'm going to, I'm going to take over here um, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, publication. And it's like Crystal said, uh, the project documents will remain public. Probably they're going to stay on GitHub, but there will be standalone representations of the mapping. Um, at, at the very least, we'll offer up the spreadsheets for human consumption, uh, but we're not sure what we're going to do about offering the mappings up for machine consumption. Um, let's see. Uh, so uh, we know that we, there are a number of, of, of standards or specifications that will accommodate the mappings, like Owl, Scott, Sparkle, RDFS or even did, a, the, I think the Yelp people coming up next will talk, might even talk a little bit about that today. Um, uh, um, and there's also um, some lesser known standards that accommodate mappings uh, like these three here. I'm, I'm not gonna talk about those. And then also um, some standard specifications could be extended. Like I would say CAOL is one of those, or we could actually extend Mark XML to accommodate a mapping, which I don't think we're going to do. And that of course doesn't exist. Um, there are some uh, standard specifications that are created specifically for ontology matching. I'm sure a lot of you know about these, uh, SEK TML, I'm informant, Um I think culminating in expressive and declarative ontology alignment language. Um, and they're all quite old, actually. Um, but our current preference right now is the RDF mapping language, RML, which we've used before. Uh, we think it's best for our purposes, mostly, mostly because it supports um, XPath, at least XPath 1, I believe. And it, it, it'll help us to navigate Mark XML to express the complex conditions that we need to express. Uh, our special situation, though, is that we're not matching ontology to ontology because Mark is not an ontology. So the slides in the previous, I mean, the, the, the standards in the previous slide, these here, um, are, really are, don't work. Um, so what I'm doing here in closing out the talk is asking you a question in the audience is, uh, what, do you, what do you think is best? What, what, do you, what would you look for? Uh, when, when you want to look at, when you want to machine process a mapping or an alignment. Um, and with that, I think I will close out. And that's the end of our talk.
Thank you very much. And we have some questions um, in the chat. So first, is there any effort to identify cluster or merge works or questions that are common to many Mark records? So the model of hierarchy is a bit different. No. But there's there are several vendors I think working on um, work and expression clustering, and uh, we we haven't seen anyone really do it very well. Um, but it's it's not part of our mapping so far. So far, okay. Then um, uh, some questions by Peter. Um, first, do you follow the changes of Mark standards in the mapping? How do you track this? Um, one of our participants is Adam Schiff, who is, um, he, he really keeps up on um, advances in Mark 21. So we're, we've been able to stay relatively up to date. And locally uh, defined um, uh, parts of Mark, are these also included? That's the, oh, that, that's good to hear because then reuse is um, easier, I suppose. Yeah. And then sec uh, another question, what's the difference between granularity of Mark and uh, 21 and RDA? So one-to-one, -one is, is, is this an exception or uh, quite often? So it, 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 this is a tricky question because um, they're both very granular. Uh, I'm not sure how to express the difference between those. We are looking for equivalents matches. We're looking for equivalence and we're trying to go uh, to decide what every Mark 21 property and map it to uh, an equivalent RDA property if it exists. Okay. Um, yeah, another question. Has R RML or N N3 been, con uh, been considered for creating mappings? RML for sure, uh, not N3. Uh, tell you the truth, I'm not sure what you, what you mean by N3. Um, well, I think it's an, an, an older standard uh, uh, less used, but I'm not, not sure. Okay, so the, 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 the master is a spreadsheet, but you, you uh, as I said, you think about mapping it to, to other um, languages as well. Okay, um, yeah. Another question, uh, where do you get the Mark 21 source fields? Because, because there's no machine readable uh, master pile, as far as I know, it's just HTML. So you do scraping or how do you get? I was thinking Crystal might want to handle that one, but it was a, we took it mostly uh, its origin. Oh, you want to do it, Crystal? I could. Uh, okay. we we used a uh, student actually used Python and I think she uh, she did use the Library of Congress HTML pages to populate the spreadsheets. Yeah, so maybe we get the Library of Congress to, to uh, publish machine readable form two or uh, together with Peter Girardi, um, he also uses um, his own uh, transformation to, to, to of the Mark 21 standard. Yeah, so do we have another question? Um, what was the reason not to choose more sound IRI mappings to, uh, for properties? Uh, we are creating work and expression entities. Uh, it's just that th at this point, we haven't mapped many work and expression uh, level properties yet. Okay, that, that was um, about um, uh, work and expression entities it's all uh, also uh, was also asked um, but I think the last question was um, um, to have um, properties with more speaking names uh, instead of um, identifiers that's a that's a that's a something in RDA itself the, the we use the RDA properties and they're all opaque identifiers uh, in the interest of internationalization uh, uh, like Joe did in his slide, uh, we we you, we can output it with with some kind of a label, um, with, maybe as an XML comment in the case of the, X, the RDA XML. Uh, but yeah, that's an RDA thing. Uh, 
It's an RDA, RDF thing. Yeah. Okay. So there is uh, some more discussion in, in the chat. Um, I don't see actual questions, but please uh, follow up in the town square in MetaMost um, so we can exchange our knowledge and, and um, 